Saturday Scrum. Hello, everybody. Great to have your company on a Saturday afternoon. Three hours of pure rugby league joy stands ahead of us before we head to Bathurst. Beautiful Carrington Park where the Panthers will take on the Tigers. My name is Tony Squires, joined, of course, by Ryan Girdler, by Brent Reid. Uh, Wade Graham is on his way into the studio. In fact, I can see his uh, young, fresh face as it opens the door mm. right now. Uh, how are we all, Reedy? How are you going? Good, mate. Good, good, good. You've got a little shout out. My, my niece, I mentioned my niece a couple of weeks ago. You did. Started a rugby league career. She scored a first try today, Ellie Hawkins, under the post. Um, and I've got to give a sister a shout out, Georgia, because I brushed her last time and she's uh-huh. a bit upset I didn't mention her. Mm. So, well, but well, Ellie's got a first try. Well, what's the sister in terms of why does she deserve the shout out? <laughs> does she <laughs> play? She feels ball? she does, Georgia. Hey, hey so, Reedy, yeah. I find it really interesting how you feel like this is the platform yeah. for your shout outs, <laughs> but you never do any on 360. Why yes. not, mate? Oh, that's a good question, yeah. yeah I don't know. Is it a good answer? You think How I about should? a shout-out next time on 360? You We're just a bit more relaxed on here, guys. We're a bit more relaxed. More... relaxed. It's a bit more relaxed. Oh, is that what it is? Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Just sh- sh- I can imagine the reaction if I did a shout-out As long as it's not considered less important in your world, that's No, all. no, fuck yeah. no. Just a shout-out to Cliffy, my grandson, where you don't understand. He's only eight weeks old, but still. First try, that's pretty impressive. Under the sticks. It was a good effort, actually. How do you know? I saw a video. There's a video of it. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah, father took a video of it. All right. No. Hey, Shared wait. How are you going, buddy? Good. Thanks, Tone. How are you? How are you? Very, very well. Thank you. Have you played at beautiful Carrington Park in Bathurst? I possibly I have actually. I think I think I have oh, played. It's memorable Panth- then. Yeah. Well, we beat the Pan- <laughs> we beat the Panthers. It was I was playing for the Sharks. Um, I remember it being not raining, but really boggy. Actually, the ground. It must have had some water during the week, uh, and we we're all. We were in there really late in the piece. We didn't spend too much time in Bathurst. That was the job of the Panthers. So, yeah, we were in there, got the two points and got out of there pretty quickly. Oh, so you didn't have to do the kind of school thing and promote the no, game? No, no. So we do – the Sharks take a game to Coffs Harbour yep. uh, each year now. They have a deal um, with the Coffs Harbour Council up there. And the boys will go up and spend the week there, do the school visits, be out in the community. Um, and it's great. It's great. When we get up there, normally they they're, they're lovely. it's a lovely town. They love their footy. Uh, they don't often get to see the NRL games at almost the, the town's folk. So when there's an event like that, you can feel the energy and how excited they are for it. And we've, we've got a good record up there at the moment. We've been there two years and won our two games. So there is a bit of um, extra motivation for the players out there. They feel like they're not only representing their area and their club, but yeah, the, the new fans and supporters that get behind them when they're there during the week. So it's pretty special when the NRL clubs take it out to the regional areas. Yeah, Parramatta, of course, took it out to Darwin and uh, didn't work out so well for them last night. We're going to get to that in some detail. Brad Arthur, very strident in his criticism of his team, which isn't always the go of coaches, is it? They, you know, no. o- operate differently, but for him, it was an absolute uh, it was front brutal tone. It was like brutal. he couldn't hold back. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, he really couldn't. He was really emotional. So, yeah, yeah, lots to get through there. We'll hear from that uh, from him in, in a moment. What happens uh, so far, charge sheet wise, injuries, Rudy? Where were, are we at? Uh, not much, Tony, out of the week. And obviously out of Thursday night, there was a couple of incidents, the James Tedesco trip and uh, Jared Rhea Hargraves um, with the dangerous contact. They both cop fines. They both should miss Anzac Day against the Dragons. <laughs> <really. laughs> and out of last night, Bryce Cartwright was charged uh, with dangerous contact on Mark Nichols. But again, it's just a fine. And obviously Dejan Arce, I think, failed the HIA last night. So uh, he'll miss their next game, I'd imagine, with that 11-day stand-down period. All right, so just before we uh, roll on, what's your sister's name again? Because if we're going to give a shout-out, you better say no. Her sister, Georgia. Oh, her sister. Yeah, her sister. Oh. Not my sister. I don't have a sister. Okay, all Two right. brothers i got, Tone. Okay. Georgia, Georgia Hawkins. All right, we're learning far too much about your family. Yeah. Let's move on. That's the last shout-out. The, the Dolphins, year. 44. The Eels, 16. Uh, what it means. We'll get there next. Saturday Scrum, doing it for King G Workwear. Triple M, rocking the footy on a Saturday afternoon. The Dragons 30, the Warriors 12. We're going to get that game uh, in a little while, but first it is... Oh, the... can't we do that one now, Tony? You're <laughs> I... so excited. Yeah, I know, I'm excited. I can't believe they're not letting you talk about that straight off <laughs> well, the top. I said when with the, you know, people yeah, say, when the preparation, the group chat, what should we first do? First two hours. First two hours, I the thought, Dragons. just the Dragons. Oh, that's fair. Yeah. I'm ready. Yeah. Yeah. Let's well, go. I, I know, I'm pumped. Go the Steelers. <laughs> I'm so pumped. Have but... you booked your finals berth, Tony? You the grand me? final, yeah. Oh, grand final, okay. Why would I bother with just... Yeah, sorry, finals isn't good enough anymore. <laughs> Absolutely. I don't uh, want to get overexcited about it because yeah. I was round oh, one I and round it, two mate. kind of brought me back to earth. So, you know, I'm not counting the chickens just yet. 
Uh, certainly Eels fans not so happy this morning. 44-16 the Dolphins got, and they led at half time in Darwin. Tough conditions, 32 degrees, incredible humidity. As it is, they, they're used to it, I guess. They've played that, their, that game there for a few years now, but the Dolphins, eight unanswered tries in the second half. I think, boys, what I might do is play you Coach Brad Arthur's view of it first, and then we can uh, take that into our conversation as well. Probably what's wrong with our season is we're a part-time footy team at the moment. We pick and choose when we want to play, when we want to make a tough choice or a soft choice. You know, because that second half wasn't good enough. It just all got too fast for us and it got too hard and we gave up. Simple as that. There's only, there's only a handful of players in this club at the moment that pick, pick, a ch- and pick to choose to come every week to play with the right mentality and toughness and want to be an 80-minute football and want to be an NRL player every week. We're st- spending a lot of time standing behind our goalposts. We've just got to harden up and defend one set. So I don't think it was a, a fitness issue. I think we're just making some soft choices at times when blokes, instead of taking the tough choice and making a decision on what's best for their teammates. Players have got to fix it. I can only talk about it so many times, Jake. Like, players have to fix it, don't they? They're the ones who got to come and play and enjoy playing the 80 minutes, the good parts of it and the, the bad parts of it and the hard parts of it. But we enjoy everything else around it, but we're not enjoying the 80 minutes. And that's the bit we get paid to do. Yes, there's the coach. How does a player react to that? Only a handful of players, he says, turn up each week with the right attitude and desire players to Players have to fix it. The players have to fix it. Mm. Yeah, so I'm just taking that in. I didn't hear that. I, yeah. I watched the game, so I didn't hear his reaction and um, just trying to get my thoughts gathered on it. I, I would say this has been bubbling away underneath the surface for a while. For him to come out so publicly and so strong um, and, and basically put his players on notice, um, the experienced coach he is, he, he would have had these conversations behind closed doors already, like in team meetings and videos after results that haven't gone their way. So he, that's pretty much a line in the sand now. For he, He's basically said they haven't aimed up. Yep. Um, they haven't aimed up consistently. Uh, they enjoy everything else that comes with the game, which I'm guessing is um, the, the, the ability to walk around town and get a little bit of notice and... Um, healthy paycheck. The, the healthy paycheck. And then, unfortunately, that they're, they're happy to take all that. But then when it comes to... The, getting the business done on the field. They just haven't been where they need to be. And I, I suppose for me, it, 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 it's obviously been bubbling away from them for a while, but they've sort of been pushed to the to the back a little bit because of everything that's going on at South. And maybe the excuse they lost Mitchell Moses, so they're, they're struggling there with their you know, leading playmaker being out. But that second half of that game where – You'd say they were in control that first half. They missed a goal kick, so they didn't go as far in front as they should have. But that second half, those tries, particularly the ones, you know, where you come through the ruck. When you come through the middle, that's they're they're big alarm bells because that's that's the one no no as a strong defensive club that they that teams do not come through you if you're a defensive club. And unfortunately for Parramatta, it was just all systems go through that middle of the field. They're good. Yeah, it it was a weird one, Wade, eh? because. You know, when they, they started the year pretty strongly and then they had that win against Manly, which was a, a good hit out for them. And then they obviously lost Mitchell Moses. And there's a lot of clubs around at the moment that are losing key personnel. Like you only need to look at the Dolphins and who didn't play for them last yeah. night with Hamaso, Farnsworth, Flegler, Kafusi. Like the list goes on. Half their cap was actually sitting on the bench. Um, and then they fell away, didn't they? Those tig- That Tigers loss was a pretty poor poor one and the Raiders one was diabolical. Uh, and then they found a way, uh, they willed their win uh, against the Cowboys, I thought, last week. were really brave and resilient and just found a way. And I was kind of expecting more of the same of that because um, it felt like they just you know, climbed out of that hole last week. And, you know, in the in the first half, um, they weren't great. You could see that their back end of sets were poor. They were looking for easy options, but they were still kind of good enough. And the Dolphins were playing solid but weren't playing great. They were still kind of the better side in the first half. And take nothing away from the Dolphins' performance in the second half. They were great. But how the Eels fell away in the second half, I don't think I've ever seen a performance quite like it. Like you spoke about how they just went straight through. And the amount of guys that were just left laying on the ground after contact, their inability on contact to actually like win that part of the collision was just incredible. And it was the outside backs coming out of their own end that were just setting a platform 
And then, you know, the Dolphins were just having a field day. And we just spoke about the amount of people that they had out, the talent that they actually had sitting on the sidelines. These were young guys that were coming in. The Bostocks, he was exceptional. Katoa was incredible. Young Max Plath came in and did a fantastic job. These are guys still, you know, earning their wages, still working the NRL out. And they put a side like the Eels to the absolute sword and... Mitchell Moses was out. We get that. But if you go through that that side, the experience they had, um, you can understand Brad Arthur's frustration. But unfortunately, Reedy, mm. the players need to be held accountable. But I get the feeling that there's going to be a lot of chat about the coach in the next couple of weeks as well. Well, there already was good. That's the issue. I mean, I think we spoke about it three weeks ago. Um, and it's fine to say the players need to fix this. And the players did name up and the players didn't put in. But it's the coach's job to get them ready. To, to get them to aim up, to make sure they don't fade like, fade like they did in the se- second half the other day. And Brad's got, you know, Brad ha- has to wear his share of responsibility for this as well. This side's in a window right now. Like they, they've got a lot of blokes who, who are uh, around the 30, 31, 32 years old. The next two years are vital for them. R- you know, Reg, um, Junior Paulo, Mitch, Gutho. Like they're at a point now where they need to win, if not this year, next yeah. year or the year after, or the window will close. And, and I think the issue a lot of us have grappled with um, in the media and will grapple with now in light of this is whether Brad's the guy that can get them over the hump. I know yep. he got them to a grand final a couple of years ago, but he's been there 11 years, 11 yep. years, but they made one grand final. They've been a, a finals footy team along the way, but they missed the finals last year. Their draw coming up, it's horrific. They go Manly, Broncos, Storm, South with Latrell, back Cronulla. That's five games, potentially all without Mitchell Moses. And yeah. he's tinkered with his halves week after week. He's played Blaise Talungi there uh, at six. He played Dejan Arce there. He's going to have to change it again because Arce yeah. will miss the next game. Um, and, you know, I, I think the issue is going to be, you're right, Gerds, in the next week or two, we're going to be talking about the coach. What because there's a bloke named Wayne Bennett sitting out there yeah, well, who would yeah. seem ready-made for this roster. The, the one thing for me is, like, if – Put Mitchell Moses back in that team. He, he's not saving they tries in no. the middle. Like he, he's yeah. not defending in the middle, and and it's a fair, it's a fair shot from the coach across, you know, his players to their attitude, and that's that's it. It seems to be their attitude, not just to the game, but their preparation in and around their game, the week's preparation, and the one thing, sort of, as from a from a player's point of view, would be it is easy to lose focus and get distracted with everything that comes outside of the footy, but you got to remember. It all beca- it all comes to you because of the footy. You ca- cannot mess with that eighty minute performance and and how you go out there and play for your team because without that and without playing at that level, all the stuff outside of footy it doesn't come with it. So n- n- whatever you want to do in your week and whatever you enjoy doing in your week, the one thing as a player you need to get right is your eighty minute performance because everything in your life stems from that. I've got to say, Tony, the one thing is Parramatta are not a knee jerk club. Like they will not react um, to this result. Um, they will take their time. They will look at the next couple of weeks. They won't rush anything because that's not the way they operate. And when they do make a decision on Brad, if it comes to that point, they are a club that will go through the front door with Brad. They won't go behind you. We've heard, you know, at South, obviously, we've heard the stories about, um, you know, Mel Meninga being sounded yep. out. That won't happen at Parramatta because you've got a board that's united. South's a little bit um, split at the moment, I think. Um, so if if Brad's future is... On the, well, it is on the line, but if, if they decide to go down another path, they will go through the front door with Brad. He, he will know where he stands. And people, go, uh, I, I just want to make it clear, people, when we talk about coaches being under pressure, sometimes people think it's personal. I love Brad. Yeah. I love him as a bloke. I think he's a really good coach. He'll find a job somewhere else if he doesn't have this job. But the issue is whether he's run his course with this football team. Yeah, I mean, sometimes it takes a voice to get you to a certain stage of your career and sometimes it takes a different voice to get you to that next level. And if there's a guy in the wings waiting like Wayne Bennett who has the reputation of doing that, taking good rosters and turning them into premiership winning rosters, that's not going to help Brad's cause. The other thing I would say, Rudy, is that, you know, coaches these days, they're obviously judged judged on their on their wins and losses during the season, but they're also judged on the systems that they put in place. And when you come into periods where, and all clubs do, where they have injuries or origin and suspension and things like that, you know, they're judged on the, the, the systems that they've put in place to bring the people through to fill those holes. And if you look at some of the other clubs that have got key injuries at the moment and the way they're responding, say, you know, how Penrith have responded without Cleary, how the Broncos have been able to sort of scratch and win games without the players they have had, even the Dolphins last night. Melbourne so had no Munster out. and kept winning 
Yeah, the, as well. the, the Eels, and they've done it last year as well, and everyone put down, you know, the suspension and the injury and all those things that they had to overcome last year. But what it showed me is their systems don't seem to be that strong because they don't seem to have players coming in like for like to be able to do the job and understanding, you know, what it takes to be a first-grade NRL player to play or represent that club. And I think that that is something else that will be taken into consideration. Well, they've won one game in New South Wales Cup and Jersey flag. One game, and that was last exactly. weekend. Yep. All right. You mentioned some of the players that went well for the Dolphins. Uh, what about Trey Fuller? Trey Fuller, yeah. He's yeah. 27 yeah, yeah, years old. Yeah. He's outside the 30, gets dispensation to come in and play, and absolutely creams it. He was Fun to watch, yeah, too. Yeah, it was good. He enjoyed it. Um... Even that little short side, the grub of the double kick to yeah. start that last try. Yeah, yeah. It was, it's a good story. You, you you don't see it often, but you, you do see it, you know, in the NRL on occasion. The the journeyman players just persevered, persevered, hanging around in the lower grades. And then, you know, a certain amount of luck or injuries go his way. He gets an opportunity and, you know, they play with free spirit and a smile on their face because yeah. it's, yeah, it, they've done it the hard way. So, yeah, congratulations well, to Trey Fuller. Benny Tia, of course, who, who coaches there, he said that he's just, in terms of Queensland Cup, he's too good for that competition. You know, he's their man of the match every week and plays mm. in that style. He was absolutely brilliant. The other, the other name I wanted to mention, because he also carved up the Dragons a few weeks ago <laughs> after being seemingly knocked out at half time, was Jeremy um, Marshall, Marshall King. King. Yeah. He was terrific. Yeah. yeah. Exceptional. Yeah, young Katoa as well. Oh, Katoa was, was unbelievable good. Max Plath came in like Johnny Plath's young bloke and Benny Terry has also been talking about him now for a couple of years and he had a little bit of a um, opportunity in the early part of the season then was suspended and then came back and yeah just had an absolute belter last night and everyone's talking about young Fuller you know they need to put it like you've got Hamaso at the fullback there yeah. you know this guy's only going to get limited chances because you've got one of the top five fullbacks at your club regardless so Maybe some other clubs come knocking, but yeah, they were outstanding last night. We talk about this game and a lack of young halves, Tony. I mean, as I could tell, they've signed him long term. They extended him out uh, recently. He is absolute diamond. Yeah, um, Isaiah Katoa. And before we move on from this game, it'd be remiss not to mention Jesse Bromwich playing 300 games, first ever to start. Yep. Start 300 yeah. games it's in the front row. It's it's quite a Still record. Still playing good footy too. It's quite a record. Yep. All right, that story of Brad Arthur will continue to grow, I'm sure. It's just such an inter interesting psychological exercise, isn't it, how a coach approaches that. And for him to have come out so aggressively about the players uh, is, is fascinating. I'd love we'll, to be in that dressing yeah, room this week, Tom. Absolutely. First training session, see how that goes it's, uh, and how they turn up next week. Uh, this is the Saturday Scrum, doing it for King G Workwear. Scrum. Great, Graham Ryan Girdler, Brent Reed, Tony Squires with you. The Dragons, 30 points to 12 winners over the Warriors last night in Wollongong, uh, a result that nobody really expected. It was a game of rugby league that, as a Dragons fan, I could watch in its entirety. You didn't have to watch <laughs> sneak out the door and just listen around the corner. Uh, I was fully committed, as was that team, both defensively and in attack. Showed some great signs uh, for the Red and Whites. It was a terrific win, Gerds. Yeah, it brought me great joy, Tone, calling yeah. that one last night and seeing a, a full hall. Uh, uh, <laughs> the hill was full yeah. down there at uh, a Wynn Stadium. And, yeah, they just um, they got they got treated to an, an absolute performance by their beloved Dragons. And, yeah, it started out with um, just some really good defence on their own line, some goal line defence. The Warriors are a great attacking outfit. Yeah. Um, and the, the Dragons made a few early errors and invited them down to their end of the field, and they put up a fair bit of resistance. Uh, the Warriors found a way through with a beautiful play. Sean Johnson scored a try, and it was kind of like, oh, they need to steady themselves here. But you could just see that the, the effort and the energy by the Dragons was there. It was obvious, and they were definitely going to compete. So it felt like we had a really good contest on our hands. And then I just thought... They wrestled back momentum. They were happy to sort of get to the end of their set, kick long. They had this mentality where it was just really professional. Um, and then I thought Shane, Shane Flanagan pulled the trigger. He brought on Blake Laurie and Jack DeBell, and, and that, I thought, changed the game. They just started to find – those two guys started finding some space around the ruck. And on the back of what their outside five had been able to do with the, the meterage coming out of yardage, those guys started really putting a dent in. They started generating some ruck speed, and they started winning that part of the game. And then all of a sudden, Ben Hunt was kicking, attacking kicks to corners, which brought in their outside backs. And, of course, Zach Lomax, who just converted a couple of those opportunities for them. So um, just a really good 80-minute performance. They weren't dominant for 80 minutes. They were probably dominant for about 65, but it was still an 80 minute performance. And you just need to look at that. I don't know what the score was with about 10 minutes to go when Tohu Harris was actually over the line 
And the try wouldn't have really had an impact on the result. There was like five Dragons players that got there and basically said, not on our watch. You know, we're going to yep. close this one out completely uh, and drove him back into the field of play. So there was lots of little moments like that, lots to like from uh, the Dragons' performance last night, Tony. And, yeah, I'm sure you guys all enjoyed it. I oh, loved it. Uh, we're going to speak with, <laughs> going to speak with Cole Flanagan in roughly uh, 20 or 25 minutes. Uh, but what is so good about them, it seemingly, anyway, this year, the difference is it's the old thing, simple, run hard, tackle hard. They really are intense in terms of the way they take the ball up. You just, are you reading my sheet here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, this is... Like this is Shane Flanagan. This is a Shane Flanagan coach football team, and they're not even the finished product yet. They still have some improvement, and they're going to have some um, ups and downs throughout this year. But he has them trending in the right direction. And we can, you know, I was coached by Flano for eight or nine years, so I've had a great experience under him. And you just need to look at some of the comments he's made towards their players in the game, um, and you know, the improvement, he, look, let's take Zach Lomax, right, for an instant. Mm -hmm. At the start of the year, he didn't want to play on the wing. Flano's got this, like, really good ability of just narrowing people's focus, giving them simple jobs to do in the game, and allowing their confidence to grow and uh, as a player and to improve as a player over time. So I'm, I'm telling you, his only two things for Zach Lomax when he put him on the wing would have been carry hard out of the backfield and chase kicks as hard as you can and compete for kicks. Yeah, he, he would have lived with a couple of defensive decisions that he could improve over time, but just get those two things right in your footy and the rest will come on the back of that. So he did that for a month of footy, the opening um, rounds of the competition. Now the, 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 the next part of his game is starting to take off the skill with his kicking. He's actually catching balls in the oh, air with, and not just competing them, or he's getting up there and bringing them down and setting up tries. And all of a sudden – you're in this good vein of form as a player and you don't know, like you don't realize where it came from. It's just easy again. It's because you got the basics of your game, right? And that's what Flano does. He, he without knowing it as a player, he, he gets you to focus on the basics, do the basics right. And then all of a sudden the eights and the nines out of 10 games start happening because those moments come for you because you're in the right place. And the other thing, which is a shame Flanagan coach team is there. You need to be willing and committed in defense. Like he'll, He'll wear the misreads, but if you're not putting your body in front and putting your body in the line, that's where he has an issue with it. And we heard it with uh, when he moved Tyrell Sloan a couple of weeks ago to the wing. He just said, mate, there's, there's, an, you need to be in that tackle. You need to get down there and put your body on the line for your team and put your body in front of people sometimes when you don't want to do it because that's what it takes in the NRL. You need to stop tries and you need to show commitment in defense and it's not surprising the way they're playing and the way they look like when they're playing because this is what Flano does and this is how he coaches. You got the reaction of the Tyrell Sloan. I mean, he's been great since, um, you know, obviously that, that shift happened in game. I tell you what it might help him as well, Tony. I mean, obviously they've, they've made um, bids to sign a lot of players and they haven't really struck many blows. But I reckon players are probably looking at it now going, this, this team's on the improve. This is a team that's better than maybe a lot of people thought they'd be. And players, you'd know better than me, Wade and Rook Gerds, players that see that and think, maybe, maybe this isn't such a bad side to be p part of uh, down the track. So I know that they've got offers out there for a few players at the moment. I reckon those players be watching it and maybe they'd be, they'd be th thinking about it more realistically than maybe they were three or four weeks ago. Well, just another thing with Flano that was underrated was his, his ability to recruit. Like, I know they haven't landed any big fish at the moment, but in my time at Cronulla, every year you added a piece of the puzzle that just made us better and improved. And it wasn't just necessarily about the player on the field. It was also how they added to the locker room, their characters, is they suit our team, were they going to fit in with our squad? And if you go from a timeline from, say, 2011 when I first signed to 2016, the roster was I wouldn't say completely different, but every year he just added someone, added someone that, that added to the group and added to the team. And, you know, eventually, you know, he got the job done and delivered a premiership to the Sharks. I guess we can't talk. And all the talk has been about Zach Lomax. And he played his 100th game uh, last night. And his performance, as you said, all year has been terrific. He's great. Uh, Above his head with his hands, it's, it's the glue is fantastic the, the way he does that. The kick the from outside the 40, the two-point field goal into the wind just before halftime as well was another brilliant move. Yeah, and like the knock on Zach has never been his ability and his skill level because yeah. some of the stuff he could do, you know, we always saw the you know the, the left-hand fan and the right-arm flick offload, the flick mm. pass. The, the only thing in the past, he was putting a horse before the 
sorry, the cart before the horse. When he was going, he was trying to go straight to the flick or straight to the highlight play instead of building a game up. And that's what he's done this season. He's built it up of carrying hard out of the backfield and just competing on that kick chase. And because he's, the more often he's doing that and going after the game and going after the hard parts of the game, all of a sudden you're in the right place at the right time and your skill takes over, your talent takes over. And we're seeing that now in his footy. Like some of those catches above his head, time to land on the ground, beats the fullback all ends up, has time to one end offload to, you know, the support. It's just, he just is a quality player and his talents are coming out now and his skill is coming out now because he's got the hard parts of the footy right. And yeah, hopefully he keeps going because he's on a trajectory that, you know, there's only there's only one way it goes and it's it's representative football. We'll keep going wait, for this season anyway, next season. Wait, 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 wait. it's hard not to think that maybe he should have kept his powder dry because... Look, I know there was some things that happened at the start of the year um, and he was playing out of position and uh, it sent, uh, you know, it, w- it wasn't a financial thing because he's obviously taken a pay cut to leave that club. But sometimes it takes the right voice to get the best out of the individual. And he's obviously had three or four coaches down there, haven't really been able to get him to a certain level where he's sort of shown any of it, the potential that was promised back from when he was coming through the system. And all of a sudden... You know, as you said, the foundations have been built. He's played out of position. He's now been moved back into the position he likes, and he's still having the same sort of impact. He's obviously got the right voice there. They're at a club that seemed to be headed in the right direction. Do you think that maybe he's having second thoughts about the decision that he's made a couple of weeks ago? Yeah, it's unsure to know the exact situation. You have to feel like there's more going on there for him to push so I think hard. There's more to it. I there. was going to say, I don't think You'd it's just to. a positional thing. You'd I think he's be. wanted out. But he the, needs to change. Yeah, is, I think he needs to. Cha- he's decided he needs to change. Yeah, yeah. but okay. did he bes- did he decide he needed to change because the merry-go-round the coaches have always maybe told him the wrong thing and maybe built him up and maybe maybe shown him a little well, bit maybe, extra yeah. love and yeah. then Fano comes in doesn't give him the extra love gives him a bit of like tough love a bit of tough love mm. a bit of some like some honesty and he doesn't like it to start with but he goes right I'm going to do the right thing I'm going to apply myself and. Um, listen to the coach, and now he comes out the other side. Like there is a, a level of maturity that comes with you, um, ex- with that experience yep. and going through the hard times and facing the adversity and coming out the other side. And hang- you look back and go, "Hang on a minute, that adversity and that tough love and those honest conversations—they were exactly what I needed." And, and mm. you, instead of feeling negative towards everything that happened, you look back with gratitude. You actually go, "Well, man, I'm lucky that happened to me because it put me in a better place and it made me a better player." So. Yep. Time will tell, but yeah, he's certainly playing the best footy he's played in. So much so, and we'll get to it uh, a little bit later in the show then. Uh, the coach, Flano, has talked talked about Lomax and his origin chances. We'll get to that a little bit later. 